Welcome back to the Stanford Cardinal Dynasty, where today we play our first rivalry game of the season. San Jose State comes to town, not a far trip for them. This is the same team we finished off last year against, picking up our second win, and we look to do the same today. Now that is coming off a really poor performance against the Pandas. 21-14, we dropped a game to FCS Southeast. And it was one that saw all three quarterbacks here for us see some playing time. Daniels, he threw three picks. Some of it was him just letting things rip as a team trying to figure out their receiving game. Bachmeyer went over 100, but the team still doesn't quite seem like they know what they're doing with the passing game. We transferred Jamari Johnson. He showed up on a couple different drives. But really, the area that seems to be the worst for the offense is the offensive line. And things have been shaken up heading into this game. But it is not the starting depth chart. Instead, we have added Matt 10's sliders. We'll see how well these end up playing. And for the most part, these are exactly what his sliders are. I, if I remember, I'll have them linked down below. The one thing I did not change or reverted was wide receiver catching. I went into a practice. I want to say on his, it's 45. My receivers wouldn't stop dropping the ball. So we're keeping it at 50. Additionally, we have a player to keep an eye out on today in freshman, true freshman CJ Draft. He's two games left here before he reaches his max to be redshirted, and he just hasn't performed very well. He has some solid run blocking. However, it's been the hands that have been a real problem. A lot of dropped opportunities. So if he doesn't perform well today, well, we might start to see a little bit more of Chico Holt, a redshirt sophomore. Another opportunity and a player we saw just a little bit of from last year, Bradley McCoy, both could step in and take some reps. And as for offensive line, another transfer, Lucas Simmons. He could play anywhere across this offensive line, though it's at right tackle, but I'm considering giving him some starting time if Baklenko doesn't perform well. But with all that said, I think it's time we get this rivalry underway. And Flintoff will do that for us. It is a nice boot. They'll take it at the goal line. Looking for a return. Cutting to the left-hand side, and he's got a lane. It's going to be Woten to try to bring him down, slowing him down. What a return here for the Spartans. A hot start as they get to the opposite 35 on the return. A great cut. And he sets up the Spartan offense in great position to try to climb up this rivalry split well in hand for Stanford in terms of overall record 17 wins for the Spartans as they don't gain a yard on first down then look for a shot down the seam a nice hit there from camp but it doesn't jar it free instead it's a first and 10 down to the 11 as they go hurry up with a pistol look keeping the two spread either side they will hand this one off for Clay, who somehow gets by the front seven. Luckily, help arrives on the tail end to bring him down. They stick with the same look here, second and five. They go back to Clay, and he is just shy of the end zone. But he was not shy by much. The backup checks in, and there's a nice stop. They'll credit that as about a loss of an inch or so, but they stick again with that pistol look. Going back to it, and Clay goes airborne for the first points of the game. San Jose State starts off on fire, and I'm sure that is not the start that this home crowd was wanting to see, especially coming off their last game. We need the offense to come out here ready to go. Maryland I as they hand it off to Irvin, who immediately finds some space. And the ball pops out, it's still out. Eventually McCoy picks it up. Speaking of McCoy, as we flip the field opposite 40. I doubt Coach liked to see that, but also great job to make a play after a bad one. Bartow checks in, and he'll end up picking up a safe gain of seven. 
Going back to him on the draw here. He finds some space down the middle and ground and pound. That's what he does best. Of all the true freshmen seeing some playing time, his chance of red shirt the least likely as I hope he takes advantage of that as that is not a fumble. Instead, a ref says incomplete pass. Second and 10. As they got Bachmeyer in motion, they swing it out to him, but the corner read it the whole way. A telegraphed play for sure. Third and 13, two spread either side. As Bachmeyer is the target for the back of the end zone, but it is overthrown. As we've already talked about a few different freshmen this year, Chicolo has yet to hit a field goal this year, but he finally makes his first of his Stanford career. We get three on the board. We're still down by four, but at least Chicolo finally hit a kick. Was on top of that, special teams unit went after it on the return as well, limiting the gain. It's actually starting inside their own 15, though finding their tight end down the sideline. San Jose continuing a good start here. Matthews, the quarterback, he'll hand it off. And again, open space. Edwards will eventually drag down the running back. Well, that's only after Bates busts off a nice run. They look to go back his way. Parker denying him that time. Tosses him down, Lassa, too. He made a couple big plays last week. And a good drive there from Ramos. Are they going to get him arriving early? I'm not sure on that call. It seemed very bang bang from up in the booth, but apparently it wasn't. A free first down here for San Jose as they go back to the running game to Fidi and Poe. We'll continue our shouting out of true freshmen. The linebacker Poe, obviously to Fidi not. He was around last year, and how about a pick here for the senior? It's Rose, who busts it to the outside and trying to beat the quarterback, but drag out of bounds at the 27. A big play, though, from our defense, setting us up in scoring range. We just need the offense to go ahead and finish it. Honestly, around where we kicked the field goal with last time, Bartow, the running back, as he takes a stretch to the outside, picks up a nice block, but maybe... It was too good of a block. This one might be a holding. And indeed, it will be. I believe two weeks in a row we've had a penalty on the transfer left tackle Ernest Green. First and 20 then. As Daniels will just step up, will pick up the penalty yardage, tack on three. But it still doesn't equate to the total amount of loss on that. Final play here of the first quarter. As it's down the middle, Bartow pushing forward, nearly finding that first. As the whistle blows, we'll head into the second, seven to three. Good news is we only need about half a yard. Marilyn I comes on out, all the blockers, and Irvin will pick up about two. Of course, the running game coming off of a really bad performance. The offensive line struggled against the Pandas front seven. Already seeing a lot more space here. Is how about space? for the tight end toe taps, but they don't give it to him. But second look might prove different. We got a booth review coming in here. Daniels, he put a lot of air under this one. It was a well-placed ball. All depends on if the tight end got it and they're giving it to us. I prefer a little bit of a better look here and in full motion, very close. As he does come in, catch. You could count it right there. And you got two feet down, a one-hand grab. Only makes sense that the rest would try to keep that from us. We take a lead here at home, 10 to seven, as it's an RPO pass to the outside. A quick tackle from Ramos. Still a good game for first down, second and three, with three options to the left. They'll go to the running game, and open space here for Bates, who's finding a lot of open space. Eventually, Camp drags him down inside the 30. They're going hurry up from there. Keeping with a spread look, though they flip it. They send trips to the right-hand side. One-on-one, -on -one, and Ramos tips it away. There was a lot of worry about him being one of the starters on the outside, and he started this year pretty well. Bates swallowed up by Tafiti. 
And that's been one of the biggest bright spots of this defense. The outside rushers, Tafiti and Cooper, both earning Player of the Week performances. But it is Ume getting the sack on third. Pushing him back to the 41 might be outside of range. And indeed, it was. So a punt forced. Offense coming on out as it's Daniels who coughs it up read option, but a flag was down much earlier. I don't know if this is going to help. It's not going to help us. A holding second on the day. It's a turnover. I don't know how we hold on the same play that we're getting hit in the backfield. Not a good start for the transfer. Honestly, none of the transfers particularly doing great outside of Johnson, the tight end, where there's a touchdown on the day. Bates gets to the outside, but it's a holding for the Spartans. So almost immediately, we're seeing an impact here from those Matt 10 sliders. The penalties did go up as it's a throw to the outside, and it's a short game. Already, I did tweak the Matt 10 slider, especially for the receiver catching, and luckily that ball came up short. They had a receiver sneakily over on the sideline. Bad throw for Matthews saves ourselves. As they dump this one off Bates, that burst of speed, and he will pick up the first on third and 14. Not only sloppy tackling, sloppy coverage. Shouldn't have had all that space around him. It's a rollout here, and we get back there to force the throw away. I feel like that did interrupt something I was talking about, but I can't remember what it was now. Either way, it's a second and 10. Matthews sitting back in shotgun, and going to his receiver will pick up five in Coleman. Now, they've done a lot of running this close to the goal line. See if that's what they do third and five. So they do drop back to pass or scrambling. Matthews outruns the linebacker and he re-gives the Spartans the lead. Turnover forced leads to a touchdown. But this is a rivalry and we're seeing a great rivalry game. About three minutes left in the first. Irvin spins off the tackle and picks up five outside of turnovers per usual offense does seem to be at least moving more smoothly this week so that's good to know practice has worked out well as Bachmeyer he gets to the outside good block downfield from Johnson and flipping the field who the opposite 40 of course Bachmeyer coming off a really good game over 100 yards he's supposed to be the leading receiver for this team and we need him to do so this year Borden another solid option as he gets to the outside. A lot of movement from the receiver pre-snap. That's a late hit. It wasn't a big hit, but still got to keep this game in check. First and 10 inside the red zone. Irvin takes the handoff down the middle and a flag comes in well late. Is this going to be a third holding on Ernest Green? Well, I think that answers my worry. We will be lowering the holding slider after this game. We'll continue tweaking with a little bit. That's just way too much. We'll get Borden to the outside here. He'll pick up about the 10 yards lost. Oh, obviously that doesn't cover the yards we had gained prior to the holding. Second and 10, we go with a toss. Irvin to the outside and a foot race. Good tackle in open space. We'll end up forcing a third and five. Two go to the left, fullback checks in in the pistol. Daniels We'll end up throwing this out to his fullback. Not a whole lot of speed there, but the quick pressure forced it. Kind of surprisingly, the offense is staying out there. It's fourth and six. They lost a yard on that previous play and false start off the right-hand side. That hard count finally pays off here. Now they're coming out with a goal line set, or at least stacking the middle. As we do hand it off, Irvin gets stuffed. They had the RPO drawn up. They just needed one more block. It's at least been a consistent thing here with Coach Barrington. He's been aggressive in those situations. Keeps the Spartans in front here, and they find a nice play downfield. Going to pick up a good game, too. Clock is moving, though. They have two timeouts remaining. We have three if we could get a stop. As they'll look again downfield, it's a nice or more even smart play there from the receiver to stop that route. They stay spread empty as we approach the 30-second mark. They got three to the right-hand side, though come with a trailing left-hand side. Pick up nine and call one of those timeouts. Imagine they're trying to at least get into field goal range here before half to go up a full seven points. 
And the pistol set we bring to Feedy. He doesn't get there. Cooper gets there right after the throw. And that's just the kind of pressure we need here. Third and one. We'll send it again to Feedy. Misses. Matthews breaks to the outside and eventually gets dragged down by Edwards. Typically not a play we see there from Tafiti. Normally very sure in his tackling. As they will continue throwing down Fielder. Trying to look downfield. Opens up the underneath. They will end up calling their final timeout. Four seconds left. Field goal unit will put them up by seven at halftime. It's our own mistakes yet again. Limiting our success in this one. Some turnovers. Going forward on fourth, we could have taken a field goal, been down one. Just some decisions we've got to correct. But it's a good thing then that we've hit halftime. We'll make some corrections, get back to it. All in all, it's been a really good battle in this one. Spartans leading time of possession. In fact, they're leading pretty much every single category. But Coach Barrington, he's got this offense moving well today. And it's a good thing then that that's where we're starting. At the 31, it's Irvin on the handoff. He'll go to the right side and pick up three. Considering what we saw from the offense last week, it is an improvement. But now we need the defense to continue making some plays here for us as now it's a sack given up by Green. John Norwood will get credit for the sack, but it has not been a good one for our transfer left tackle. Maybe Simmons should be seeing some time instead of him. Pass once again going to be a big gain as we do find Noah Short. But again, flag down in the backfield. The good news for Green is it's not against him. Instead, it's on Pale, right guard. So third and 18 then. Can Daniels find a big play as he's got time? The time runs out, though. A flag comes in late. Is it going to be another holding? This slider is ridiculous. Not trying to throw any shade at Matt Tun. He's been the slider guy for a long time. But well, this has just been horrific as Wright can't get the pick. Normally he's been great at forcing those. Does at least get the pass breakup. Second and 10. As they go quarterback draw, Matthews gets wrapped up. Takes a shot to the ribs from Cooper. This is where the Stanford D has to lock things down. As they will look to pass the ball. Gonna flood one side and just a great throw from Matthews. And honestly, we just gotta get some more pressure. That's where the defense has had its most success in the past. They go with a run, and Cooper gets the tackle. He's coming off a player of the week performance. Loss of three brings up second and 13. Spread empty look here for the Spartans. As they go back to the quarterback draw, and the blocking is just so good on it. We've got to have better than that. Third and four yet again here. As they block everything up, it's a shot down field. Ramos drags him down at the 15. Spartans yet again driving. Already up a touchdown, trying to make it two here. As they go across the middle, big hit by Parker. Still goes as a gain of six, though. Second and four. We bring the pressure. They get the first down and down to the inch line. This has been a game where we haven't seen much from the linebackers. We need that group to step up as they don't hear touchdown two score lead for San Jose State. And our offense better put together a touchdown drive here. It is desperate. Daniels dropping back. He's going to roll to the right hand side here. Try to settle the feet and finds Bachmeyer who shakes the tackler. He's going to pass midfield 30. 21 defender coming in. He tried to hit the brakes. Well, that's a nice way to start the drive, and it looks like hurry up from there. Daniels trying to get a touchdown quickly here to build that momentum. And as you can tell, we do once again have the ability to make some changes, some audibles. So we fix that as well as we stick, honestly, with the same play. Daniels, he's going to roll, and it's a touchdown, but a flag is down again. At least it's to a new guy. Baklenko with the holding call this time. Take the touchdown off the board. Noah Short in motion. He's going to take the jet sweep, find a little bit of space, break to the outside, and drag down at the 11. Second and goal, still outside the 10. Come out with a strong pistol look here. It's Irvin down the middle. We'll pick up about five. That'll leave us 
third to goal. Daniels hard count, no one jumps. Across the middle, and he couldn't find Bachmeyer. And again, offense staying on out. We're down two touchdowns. We're in the third quarter, and there we go. We draw him offside yet again. Well, that'll at least make things a little bit closer. Fourth and goal now at the three. Got two receivers to the right-hand side. And bumped on his route. No penalty call. They say it was in five yards. It's another turnover on downs. That's two possible field goals. That'd be six points. It would be a one-score game. Just those decisions coming back as they do hand it off. Getting back to the line is Bates. We could really use... With a big play here, safety would be fantastic. As they do go with a delayed handoff, Bates will pick up one. With a third and nine. Will they stick with a ground game? We'll find out in the fourth quarter. So far, it's not been the game we were looking for. We still have a chance here, but it's got to be a really dominant fourth quarter. And it starts with a tackle from Keanu. We'll force the punt. And actually, let's try to get after him here on the punt. If we could block this, get an immediate touchdown, that would already be a huge start here for us. Though no pressure on the punt. We'll have a return at least from Thompson. He's got a nice boost of speed, though. Great wrap-up. We've driven down to scoring range twice. We've come away with nothing. We cannot afford that anymore today. As it's some good coverage. Shot down field, and it's picked off. I don't know where Daniels was going on that. Part of your hopes. He just meant to throw that to a different receiver and he put too much on it. I don't know. But that's a bad play. Across the middle, great catch. Spartans really putting together a good game here. They're just doing all the little things correct and they haven't punished themselves as much. Great throw under pressure is Matthews. San Jose on pace to add their own win to their record column here. As it's to the outside, Bates stop minimal gain. Last year's matchup, it was a good one for the first half. Stanford was able to pull away in the second. Now they're trying to keep San Jose from doing the same against them. Bates on the run, stopped a yard shy. But they've just had such a good variety of plays. Cardinal defense has yet to figure it out, but Camp and Tafiti do there. But the offense is not done. They're staying out here. They're trying to end this game. Fourth and three. They will look to pass. Couple different crossing routes, and somehow they fit it in. We just can't get any luck on our side here. Now the Spartan down inside or just outside the 10, but well inside the red zone. We need a turnover. Somehow, some way. About four and a half minutes left. They hand this one off Bates. He's down to the two. Gotta have something here, and instead it's a three touchdown lead. San Jose putting it on here in Palo Alto. This was the exact kind of play that basically ended our season with no home fans last year. We gotta do something to turn it around. Need some players to make some plays as Daniels coughs the ball up. It gets kicked forward and Irvin recovers it. We gain two on the play, somehow, some way, or actually, no, check that. They move it back for a loss of three. Okay, then. Apparently, we don't get the big gain then. Play action here. Daniels is going to roll down to the left-hand side and just gets rid of it. No one's getting open. The third and 13, it will be. Four down territory here throughout. We do get someone to jump off sides. As it's a pass downfield, Bachmeyer will get the catch turn up out of bounds so we can decline that penalty. But I do appreciate the fact that he was playing like he was injured after it. First and 10 at the 43. Daniel's making a couple different changes here. As he is getting hit again on the throw. So far, the slight boost for the pass blocking doesn't really look like it's helping. The holding calls, though, those have definitely affected this game. Wide open here is Borden, who will get the catch and up out of bounds. Now, General Newell injured on the play. Same guy as earlier. Perhaps this time, an actual true injury. He'll head off the field as we have a first and 10. 
Some more play action. Rolling. We got Bachmeyer with some green grass. He turns up, though he can't outrun number two. Clutch tackle there. Daniel's going to get under center. Thank you. First and goal. We slide Bolden in a little bit. And we've got Draft, who's getting jumped. That just might be the nail in the coffin here for us. Not that... And honestly, wasn't already down by three. Just couldn't finish drives in this one. Half of them due to holding calls. We're definitely going to fix that going into the next game. But I don't want to take away anything here from the San Jose State offense. They played a dominant game today. They did all the little things well, and it's not like they did anything special either. As we do finally hit the two-minute warning. They ran the same plays, same formation. Our guys just simply weren't making plays out there. Second and three, they got the receiver in motion. They fake the handoff to him and base getting chopped out. There is a lot of talent on this Stanford Cardinal team, but I think it's the process that we're going through right now as most of our talent, they're sophomores and freshmen. Flag down here, why not? Let's have another one. At least it's not just ourselves getting called with all these holdings, though. Can't really say that they've had holdings on any of their big plays. Like, we've had a, a touchdown or two called back as Bates will pick up a decent little bit there. We'll get our offense out here, but it's going to be a couple different new players. We'll bring out Elijah Brown at quarterback. We got Harris, Thompson, Short, and Rotten over on that left-hand side. Let's just see if someone can make a play here as it's out and tipped away from Short. In terms of seeing the best growth for next year, we might also need to move on maybe from Ashton Daniels. He is a senior, and right now he's not leading us to anything good. We do get the catch there, third and inches. As for the quarterback options, we would have for next year, obviously, Elijah Brown. Miles Jackson is another. So we got a couple different options that we could look to go at. As it's scrambling to the outside and downfield, we find Fleming. Ten seconds left, a timeout is called. Now, Brown did lead us to a nice drive to cap off last game. Could he do the same here? As they flip it out, it's for Fleming. Too far out in front. Timing. Sometimes that's all it comes down to is just finding the right timing. One-on-one -on -one to the left-hand side. Do have safety help over the top. As it's a little bit of a switch concept. And we're going to find short yet again. We finish a game off with a positive note. But I would love to finish a game off with a win. That's kind of the whole purpose. But ultimately, San Jose does finally tack one on to their win column. Across this rivalry, we are still very much in charge. But we drop now under 500 to start the year, and every loss is going to start to hurt us, especially when it comes to recruiting. And with relegation now a factor, we don't want to face this team in the same conference. But with that being said, still got to give them some major props. Overall, they put together just a fantastic game, and they deserved the win. And this is exactly why losing those kind of games hurts. Jalen Brockell was in our favor. And then as we got through the bye week for week five, he then decided to go to UW. Of recent, they've had far more success than ourselves. One thing to note here, no one has signed anything. We're still in a lot of good battles, but the corner we're really trying to go after here in Lamont East, he's back favoring Oregon. But he's coming in this week as we're playing a winnable game against Washington State. And comparing our team to their team, we're pretty even here. All of these games that we're gonna play in, at least most of them this year, are winnable for us. We just gotta do so much better. None of their quarterback options are over an 80 overall. Our best are 280 overalls though. I don't think we're gonna be starting an 80 overall next week. We'll talk about that in a second. They have a couple different options here at running back and we've played all over the place when it's come to the running game. Sometimes really good, sometimes not. Their best receiver is an 80 overall. Altogether, this is a very comparable team to ourselves. Their defensive line, their DTs are above an 80 or above, but their outside guys are not. Even if they get a little bit of these outside linebackers and edge rushers, maybe Keith Brown, though he's a pass coverage guy. So again, we should do pretty well against this kind of team. 
They got a 78 and 84, so they got a decent guard. Center, both their guards are decent, but then that's it. We should be able to play a good game against this team. And I think the quarterback we're going with next time is going to be Elijah Brown. He's had two drives at the end of two straight games, and they've been touchdown drives. We're going to give him a shot to start a game. The accuracies, they're not great. Throw under pressure is not very good, but he's got a lot of arm strength, a little bit of some mobility, and he has room to improve, and he'd be around next year. The other options would be Daniels, but he's not going to be around next year. Miles Jackson, he just doesn't have the speed, and the line is not holding up. If they are not able to perform, I am perfectly willing to pull the red shirt here on Chad Lloyd and get him out there. Pro potential is a deal breaker for him. So if we can't get some guys much higher up in the draft boards, then we could end up losing him. You know, he's not gonna improve his arm whatsoever. He's stuck at a 91, but that is doable. Still second best on the team. His accuracies can improve a little bit. They're not the best, but he has much better throw under pressure than that of Elijah Brown. So he provides a little bit of some flexibility and he is fast. If we just have to scramble no passing to actual receivers, just straight up running. We will do it. But he also has some mental traits, which none of our other quarterbacks do. He's a road dog, so he's gonna have increased composure gains on the road. Maybe that will help us out. Maybe that's what we need. And this year, I'm not holding back. We've gotta find a way to improve this team before we really end up burying ourselves. Irvin, he had an all right game, didn't see much of Bartow. We did end up, after that game, putting the red shirt on CJ Draft. He is not ready yet. The blocking's there, the hands are not. So we might see a little bit of a rotation here. Chico, Holt, McCoy, Fleming, they're all very much in that same kind of lineup. We did give Fleming the opportunity. He did have a grab out there. He's also 6'7". He might just give us another body to just try to loft things up to. Give us some options. But we got to figure out how to just play consistent ball. And who knows, maybe that game goes different if we didn't have 28 holding calls. But that is a who knows situation. As we move forward, I'm taking it back to 50. I don't remember having many holding calls before, so we might slowly increase it. But that game, it was too much. And both sides were getting called on it. So there's at least that, but we were getting hit much worse. But with a one and two start, we are not doing the worst in our division. We haven't played a divisional game. Oregon State are 0-2 in division. Washington State 0-1 as well as Arizona State. UCLA, they haven't played either, but they've lost three games. So we're doing enough right now to not be in worry of relegation, but we've got to start climbing because we've got some big dogs up here and I can't allow Cal to run away with this conference. So we've got to get things right and to make sure you don't miss out on how we try to get these things right Stick around, hit that bell icon on the bottom right, or scroll down to the sub button and definitely tap that bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Madden 25 on Tuesday and Thursday. And we're continuing in our home stretch as next time we face the Cougs.